Fallout 4 is a cursed game. It's simultaneously the most popular and most divisive game in the franchise that players either love to play or love to hate. In this video, we're going to capture the essence of what it's like to play Fallout 4 today so you can decide if you want to go on the ride. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs, so if you enjoy this video, be sure to nuke that like button and subscribe for more. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Our journey into post-apocalyptic Boston starts with character creation. Whether you want to look like Rick Ross, Jack from Mass Effect 2, or a 400-pound Jagoff with a six-pack, Fallout 4's character creator has enough flexibility to create your ideal protagonist. The customization options in the character creator are surprisingly good for Bethesda. And even though most of the character models in this game look like they've been poached from a wax museum, it's relatively easy to create a character that looks the way you want them to. For the most part, anyway. Fallout 4 is kinda like cosplay for me. I like to create the most ridiculous character possible and unleash them into the wacky wasteland. And this is appropriate because Fallout 4 is a hilarious game. A hilarious game about a nuclear apocalypse, but still funny nonetheless. I can never take Bethesda games seriously because there's always an air of goofiness, glitches, and jank. Oblivion and Skyrim were like this for me, and Fallout 4 is no different. After generating our GigaChad MC, we'll have to consider our build. Do we want to be a melee-toting brute, a gunslinging Andy, or a smooth-talking Sally? It all starts by choosing our special skills with the vault Salesman. Go away. This video is sponsored by Hawked, a brand new free-to-play online extraction shooter that is sure to grab your attention. You are a renegade, embarking on an ultimate treasure hunt to recover relics from a lost civilization. But stay vigilant because you're not alone, as fierce enemies and other players can bring your treasure hunting to a quick end if you're unprepared. Play solo or team up with two to three players to perform heists and gather valuable loot from the mysterious Exile. Hawked has an incredible arsenal of weapons and powerful abilities to suit your preferred playstyle, so be sure to switch up your loadout to suit the task at hand. After solving puzzles and claiming the ancient treasures, take it to an extraction point for the ultimate payday. Hawked is launching on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series on February 15th. The game is completely free to play, and you don't need a PlayStation Plus or Game Pass subscription to dive into the action. But if you are subscribed, you'll get an exclusive PS Plus pack. The devs are also celebrating the launch of Hawked with some really cool bonuses and giveaways. From now until March 7th, you can earn in-game drops by watching your favorite streamers play Hawked on Twitch. Also, check out the big giveaway on the Hawked game website that is happening right now. Prizes include a high-spec PC, PlayStation, Xbox, as well as a selection of customized controllers. Now is the perfect time to dive into Hawk. Click on my link in the description to download Hawked right now and claim your bonus rewards to get a head start on your treasure hunting journey. Character builds are a lot more flexible in Fallout 4 than previous titles owing to the perks system. You can mix and match a lot of different buffs tailored to the needs of your playstyle. You can even continue to boost individual special stats with your skill points, which wasn't really an option in earlier games. At least not to the same extent. My favorite perk is Idiot Savant, which grants you random XP multipliers. The lower your intelligence, the better your chances of gaining double and triple XP rewards. But even with a high intelligence character, you'll still get these bonuses occasionally, making it a great way to level up faster. It's kind of broken. But forget about stats, we all know the most important thing is fashion. The wardrobe and armor options in Fallout 4 are downright ridiculous. You can dress like a 1940s gangster, a jazz singer, Mad Max, or even a member of the village people. If you want to maintain the tightest fit, you need to pick up the Ballistic Weave Armor mod. This allows you to add defensive stats to pretty much any piece of clothing in the game. So my armored bathrobe is the best in slot chest piece, aside from a snazzy set of power armor. If your character ain't sporting that drip, then why even play the game? The dialogue system is everyone's favorite part of Fallout 4. The implementation of the dialogue wheel allows for a wide range of conversation options such as yes, no, ask a question, and sarcasm. Oh, I'm going in naked. 
Fingers crossed I get superpowers. Dialogue wheels aren't inherently bad, and there are other games that implement them well, such as Mass Effect and Deus Ex Human Revolution, but the writing in Fallout 4 does the dialogue wheel no favors. It makes it difficult to really get into character when your conversation choices are so narrow and inconsistent. Your character ping-pongs in between molding out over their missing child and being like, Nah, I'm just straight chillin', bruh. It's awkward. A lot of players were also critical of Bethesda's decision to hire voice actors for the protagonist. Every previous Fallout game had a silent main character. Personally, I don't mind the voice protagonist because I find conversations with silent characters to be kind of awkward and clunky. The conversations feel more, well, conversational if everyone is voice acted. <laughs> you call this a farm? It's pathetic. Yeah, I know. I think you best be moving on. Sure, the overall writing quality and dialogue options could have definitely been punched up. And sure, I believe that New Vegas handled player dialogue better. But at the end of the day, Fallout 4's dialogue design doesn't impede my enjoyment of the game. And the winner of the contest would get to meet the famous John Caleb Bradburton himself! Oh boy! John Caleb Bradburton? How exciting! I still love being a sarcastic jagoff in Fallout 4. It kind of reminds me of the purple dialogue options from Dragon Age 2, another cursed game that takes a lot of heat. But out of all the despicable things in Fallout 4, nothing strikes fear into the player base quite like... I'll let you know if I hear of any settlements that need our help. I have a love-hate relationship with Fallout 4's settlement building system. On some playthroughs, I love collecting every scrap of junk I can find in the Commonwealth, hauling it all back to my workshop, and building up a nice little community in Sanctuary Hills. Then I love destroying those settlements one by one and replacing them with raider outposts in the Nuka World DLC. In other playthroughs, I'll completely ignore the settlement system and basically just use the workshop as a storage dump for all my gear. The settlement system itself is just fine, but just like Adam Jensen, a lot of Fallout fans were like, I never asked for this. I never asked for this. Part of my reluctance to engage with the settlement system stems from the god-awful Radiant Quest system, which auto-generates a bunch of boring-ass fetch-and-kill quests in an endless cycle of low-tier content. Preston Garvey, the soy boy loser who appoints you General of the Minutemen, became a poster child for these quests. Almost every time you approach Preston, he hits you with that infamous line, Another settlement needs your help, handing out yet another repetitive Radiant quest. He even sometimes interrupts his own dialogue for unrelated quests to hand you yet another side quest. Because this is a buggy Bethesda game after all, so of course Preston is scuffed and janky as f***. Meanwhile, Preston can't be bothered to do any of the heavy lifting to rebuild the Minutemen himself. Hey bro, if I'm the general of the Minutemen, shouldn't I be the one handing out orders? What the fuck kind of scam you running here, bro? I can't wait to go to Nuka World, you know what I'm saying? Bethesda games have never been known for having particularly strong combat, so it's kind of surprising that the gunplay in Fallout 4 is actually pretty good, and still holds up relatively well today. The shooting saw a major upgrade from its predecessors, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, with faster paced shootouts and somewhat improved enemy AI. Enemies will now actively take cover, try to flank you, and hit you with grenades or molotovs, leading to some tense encounters, especially on higher difficulties. Fallout 4 also offers a good amount of weapon variety, including laser rifles, shotguns, ARs, sidearms, and unique guns like the Fat Man, which launches many nuclear missiles. On top of this, you can customize your weapons with a variety of attachments, scopes, and modifications. Even melee is incredibly fun in this game, especially when using consumable items like Buff Out and Jet. I had an absolute blast on my melee-only run back when I used to livestream. Fallout 4 also made major overhauls to VATS, which now slows down time instead of completely pausing the action to selectively target specific body parts on your opponent. You can also build up a critical hit meter and land guaranteed crits on command when the bar is full. Even after hundreds of hours of gameplay, I still thoroughly enjoy the combat whenever I dive back into this game. Exploration has always been one of the strongest components of Bethesda RPGs, and Fallout 4 represents the peak of 
Bethesda's open world design alongside Skyrim. Wandering the wasteland of post-war Boston and the suburbs is one of the main things that got me coming back to Fallout 4 time and again. The Commonwealth is filled with interesting handcrafted locations, which is something Bethesda lost when they made Starfield. Every time I saw another undiscovered map marker on my radar, I was excited to see what I would discover. Sometimes it would be nothing much, just some random loot and hollow tapes. Other times I might run across a hidden Deathclaw or Super Mutant waiting for its next meal. Other times I might discover a really cool power armor set. Or even a side quest involving a guy selling human meat to keep up with an increased demand for his products. And if I hit him with the Trank gun, I could even blackmail him to cut me in on the profits. There's also an interesting aspect of vertical exploration once you push into the suburbs and city limits of post-war Boston, discovering new pathways up skyscrapers and collapsed highway structures. There are a lot of valid critiques you could levy against Fallout 4 when it comes to storytelling, role-playing, choices, or respect for the series' lore, but when it comes to world design and exploration, I think Bethesda hit the nail on the head. Aside from the scuffed dialogue, one of the big criticisms of Fallout 4 is its lackluster role-playing and storytelling, particularly in the main quest. Your character is the sole survivor from Vault 111, a bunker of cryogenically frozen pre-war Bostonians. You are briefly woken from your centuries-long deep freeze, only to watch your partner get shot in the head and your infant son stolen from you before getting refrozen. You awake in the 2200s and enter a wasteland completely ruined by nuclear weapons, and your main goal is to find your son. This emotional hook just didn't really do it for most players, myself included, who didn't care much about the random infant child that had two minutes of screen time before the player was thrust into this scenario. As you search for your son, you'll also get introduced to the main factions vying for power in the Commonwealth, the Minutemen, Brotherhood of Steel, Railroad, and the Institute. This faction struggle shares a lot of parallels with the main story in Fallout New Vegas, the latter of which likely provided the blueprint for Fallout 4. But for some reason, people just don't gravitate towards Fallout 4's factions in the same way they do for the NCR, Caesar's Legion, Yes Man, and Mr. House. Again, I think the writing quality has a lot to do with this. I like a lot of the characters from the main factions, and there are some interesting quests with companions like Paladin Dance, Deacon, etc. There are also some significant story choices the player can make in both the main story and side quests like The Secret of Cabot House, The Big Dig, and Human Error. Hey Lorenzo, let's get you out of there, buddy. Ah, at long last, you did the right thing fed off me like vampires to prolong your pathetic, worthless lives. That is now over. Your time is up. Is this the good ending? <laughs> but Fallout is a franchise that is known for insanely high levels of player choice and agency, so many players don't feel like Fallout 4 lives up to the OG Fallout legacy or games like Fallout New Vegas. Fallout 4 also has 15 different companion characters, each with their own questline and many of whom can also be romanced. I'm not going to run down the whole list, but my favorites were Nick Valentine, Hancock, Paladin Dance, the Super Mutant Strong, and that drunk Irish junkie lady. Fallout 4 also has a bunch of DLC, but the only ones really worth mentioning are Far Harbor and Nuka World, with Far Harbor being, by far, Harbor the better expansion. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Bethesda seemingly took a lot of player feedback to heart when crafting the Far Harbor DLC because there are much more significant story choices to be had in the campaign. You're tasked with joining Nick Valentine on a job to rescue a family's missing daughter who ran away to a synth colony in Far Harbor, which is styled on the IRL Bar Harbor, Maine, complete with thick New England accents and lots of fishermen. Far Harbor is in the midst of a brewing conflict between the local residents, the synth colony, and a group of nuclear-loving cultists called the Children of Adam. Meanwhile, the island is overrun with a radioactive fog, which brings out vicious monsters that threaten the fragile peace of Far Harbor. This DLC really deserves a full video on its own, and it's one of my top five favorite expansions of all time. I love inserting myself into the various faction struggles, seeing all the different choices and consequences, and uncovering the history of Dima and Nick Valentine. I give Far Harbor a 10 out of 10. 
Nuka World, on the other hand, revamps the settlement system and allows you to roleplay as an evil raider killing and looting all over the Commonwealth. The expansion starts with a trip to the Nuka World amusement park, which has now been completely taken over and divided up between three raider gangs. After defeating the overboss with a squirt gun, you get appointed as the new overboss of all the gangs in the park. Classic Bethesda, immediately promoting you to the head of some type of faction. But pursuing this DLC is all worth it just to piss off Preston Garvey. Hi. What do you want? Did you really think I wouldn't find out about what you've been doing? The last thing the Commonwealth needs is another gang of raiders. Don't get in my way, if you know what's good for you. I hope it doesn't come to that. It's not too late to do the right thing, you know. Wipe out those raiders, instead of helping them. I'm the leader of the gang. The Commonwealth is ours now. The Commonwealth will never belong to scum like you. Nuka World doesn't quite hit the high points of Far Harbor, but it's still incredibly fun, and there are lots of opportunities to be an asshole in pretty hilarious ways, which makes it entertaining for me at least. Hustle with any bad outlaws. This has been a real pleasure, Sheriff. But I think it's time you and your robot friends got sent to this scrap heap. Overall, I'd give Nuka World a 7 or 8 out of 10. Worth it if you love Fallout 4, but not a can't-miss experience like Far Harbor. Before we wrap up, I briefly want to touch on mods, which is one of the big reasons Fallout 4 still maintains a respectable player count nearly 10 years after its release. Now I will admit, I've barely scratched the surface when it comes to mods, and most of my playtime in this game has been in vanilla Fallout 4. But there are some impressive projects, both released and in the works at the moment, including expansion-sized mods like Fallout London, Fallout 4 New Vegas, Fallout Miami, Capital Wasteland, Project Arroyo, and many more. There are also plenty of mods adding new features, quality of life improvements, new story content, or even just silly little things like replacing the Deathclaw sound effects with Alex Jones sound bites. Stop it! Bethesda has always provided excellent support to modders, while other companies like Rockstar and Nintendo try to sue modders into oblivion. And it's clear that Bethesda benefits from the modding community because they are a core pillar keeping their games alive and fresh many years after their initial release. So in conclusion, Fallout 4 is pretty good and you should play it if you haven't. And if you have played it, you should reinstall it and play it again. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and reviews. And don't forget to click on my link in the description to download Hawked and start your journey as a renegade treasure hunter. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.